We're at the end of our uh, training session. I'm going to ask everyone to try and sit as close to the front as possible. This is your final exam. You're going to devise a personal evangelistic plan. And uh, I want you to use your the basic information that we've, we've developed throughout this course as a guideline of how to implement and how to plan your evangelistic uh, outreach plan. I've created a, a rubric to help you identify certain areas that need to be worked on and to show you what would be an excellent evangelistic plan, what would be an okay evangelistic plan, and what would probably not work as an evangelistic plan. And the four areas would be, major areas would be, four of the major areas we touched on in our uh, lecture, in our discussion. Uh, use of your evangelism style, I'm looking for that. Uh, looking for how you use your relationship for Christ. Also looking for common ground activities, how you use common ground activities to help influence others for Christ. And also the use of your own testimony. And at this time I think um, I can ask Sister Jay to come in on this part because <laughs> it should be pretty self-explanatory. And um, I think you and... Uh, I'm going to put you and Elder Examinees together as well. Yeah, and, uh, brother and sister Francis, I, I think we could have you do this part. If you have any questions, you could ask. So each of you need to create an individual plan first. And then uh, I want you to switch off, give, the, give your partner your plan, take your partner's plan, and I want you to grade the plan based on the rubric. So for example, let's use the first one, evangelism style. style. Let's say for example, your partner doesn't know what their evangelism style is. They're waiting for the pastor to tell them what to do in order to engage in evangelism. You give your partner's plan a one in that area. Uh, if your partner idea of evangelism is out of help out, whatever there is to help out, then you give them a two, because that's a willing spirit, you give them two for effort on that. But if your partner has an idea of their evangelism style, for example, uh, Sister Rose, what did you score highest in on the evangelism style test? Do you remember? Were you a servant? Were you service? Testimony. Was, it, was it testimony? Good. So your whatever your evangelism plan is, if it's uh, predominantly testimonial, then you get a three because that would mean you would be you utilizing the evangelism style that God has blessed you with. Do you know what style you scored second highest in? Was it service? Because I know a lot of people have service as the mm -hmm. primary service thing. Spirit, same as the one. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the six would be confrontational, intellectual, uh, testimonial, invitational, service, and I think the, there, there's a sixth one that, that I'm not remembering. I think invitational and testimonial. <laughs> Okay, good. So, if Sister Rose was able to create something that, a program that would be, she would give her testimony and then invite people out. If she can craft that, you'd give her a four because she's using the two top skills that God has given her to evangelize with others. Is that clear? Does that make sense? Any questions? What's the scale? <coughs> the scale is one to four. The scale is at the top there. At the top, right here. 
Let's go over our, our worksheet, our rubric. See, one means tested negative. We're trying to find out how contagious you are. Mm -hmm. Brother and Sister Francis can help me with this. If you're not really contagious because you have no clue what's happening with evangelism, you don't know what your style is, you don't know how to give a testimony, you don't know how to do anything, then it means you won't be very effective in witnessing. True or false? True. True. Because you don't know what to do. You're just waiting for the pastor to tell you, okay, I want you to go hand out some tracks. And you go, you do that. But that's not very contagious. Uh, if you have a positive kind of, you'll do anything for the Lord. That's a good thing. So you're kind of contagious, but not as contagious as we want you to be. Uh, sharing it would be you're using the basic tools that we shared in, in this lecture. So for evangelism style, sharing it would mean you score three if you know what your primary evangelism style is and you're able to craft something that would work with your primary evangelism style. And uh, spreading it, if you're really, really on fire for Jesus, then it means you're, you're using at least two of your best styles to, to, to spread the word. So for me, it would be intellectual and testimonial. I'd have to craft a program that would be able to answer certain questions that people raise, but also do it in a way that employs my testimony, what I've been through. Does that make sense? So we're going to choose one of the boxes. <clears throat> we want you to write your plan on this paper, oh, okay. and then you'll use the box now to score your partner's plan. Does that make sense? To see where they fall if they if they're using these principles. Okay. So write a plan. Right. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do evangelism? And your plan must include your evangelism style. It must include people that you know, that you used to know, that you want to know. Remember, we went through all of those principles. Your plan must include certain common ground activities. If you like music and the people who you're trying to win the Christ like music, then if you include that in your plan, it shows that you're thinking about evangelism, thinking about witnessing. I'm trying to get you guys to think. We just talked for four weeks, and it's good. Your evaluations may be, man, this, this course was the best thing that ever happened at Imani. But if you can't make a plan, it means that we need to reteach certain things. It means that we need to re-emphasize certain things. It means that means that we need to show practical examples of certain things. Right. So, evangelism styles, use of relationship, use of common ground activities, and the use of your testimony. Last week we dealt dealt with uh, how to write writing down your testimony and how to share that with somebody so that that could help them become closer to Christ. Uh -huh. Okay, so go ahead. Let's see how well we do. My use of my evangelism style, my use of uh, my relationships, my use of common grown activities, and how I use my story, my testimony. Okay, so mine is using my evangelism styles of intellectual and testimonial. I will engage a newcoming Jamaican family with the gospel by using our common interest in music, fellowship, education, and our binding Jamaican heritage. I will use my testimony of the transforming power of God to overcome poverty, anger, and other issues, and testify to the joy of fellowship in Jesus. Hmm. Sounds good, right? Okay, now mark me. Oh, you think I use my evangelism style? Do you think the two go together? I use the intellectual and the testimonial well? Mm -hmm. yeah. You think so? Okay, good. Now I fully understand how it works. Huh? I said, now I fully understand how it works. Now that you get an example. Good. 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 And it's a realistic thing, because that's yeah. something that I have been doing, and I plan to continue doing more purposefully. Okay, how about my relationship? What type of relationship did I talk about? Uh, your um, home, um, people that you 
associated with at home. Right. So my right. Jamaican family. But you see, you could mark it down on that relationship aspect. Because right. I, all, I only mentioned one particular group, which was Jamaican. New, you come in Jamaican. Okay. Mm. I never really talk about people who are in the community. I already know, which I probably know a whole lot of people, or people that I used to know, or even people that that I want to know. So I'd probably be a three because my focus. And a three doesn't mean it's bad, it just means I'm, I want to focus only on people who I know already. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm giving a sort of emphasis to, to, to my evangelism. Um, how about common ground activities? I don't get a whole lot for this. Are my activities things that I'm already doing? Because I mentioned things like um, music. Fellowship, yes. education, yes. Yes. and my interest in my Jamaican culture. Mm -hmm. Am I adding anything new to the list? Am I going no. out there searching for new activities? Well, we mm -hmm. don't know about your Jamaican <laughs> <laughs> But that's just something that I'm always interested in. If you bring up Jamaica, I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to be excited about it, right? It's not anything foreign to me, right? My pots will go come out and everything, you know? <laughs> right. So, I, I probably get high marks for that too because I'm already, I'm using the things I'm already doing, I'm already interested in, which are, are they common to the, the group that I'm trying to witness to? Yeah, they would kind of have the same interest, the same interest in music, same interest in fellowship because they're in a foreign country and they want to know that they can move around people who understand their culture, their way of, their way of life. So I'm using that and <coughs> saying... True, true. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but the people I'm focusing on will be the people who are into the fellowship and all of that. Uh, that aspect of it. Um, how about my testimony? Do you see me using my testimony here? Huh? Right. Because I'm I'm telling them about my story, how I grew up in Jamaica, and how the gospel made a difference. Because the Jamaicans that I'm here that I'm thinking about are interested in education and all of these things, and I'm using that now, my story of how the Lord brought me through, as a testimony to them and as a way of getting them now to to be interested in the gospel. So probably my major issue now would be to get to know more people, right? Mm -hmm. So you see that's an area that I need to work on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody wants to share their plan, evangelist plan? Okay, go ahead. You can come I'll give you like three minutes. Uh, my two evangelistic areas are testimonial and invitational and who will I focus on three groups of people my classmates uh, my family and my neighbors um, the areas of common ground we have um, as far as my family uh, we like cleaning <laughs> together and we like watching movies together and we like to talk about finances and plans for our future together. We like to brag about who's going to be a doctor and who's going to be this and that. So um, that's something we like to do together. And with my parents, we like to have those um, moments of wisdom talk. And so um, with my classmates, they mention God all the time. The Lord have mercy or thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So um, those are great moments to bring up and bring in my testimonies. Um, everyone in my class, there's no one American in my class. Uh, we're all foreigners, so we all have um, issues with La Migra. We're in Cardio so something to bring up. Um, and also studying. We're always begging our teacher to um, to be like on us and give us less work. So that's an area we could use. Um, with my neighbors, um, there's a lot of kids in my neighborhood. So
So some go to school with my sisters. One of my sisters is in high school and the other is in like third grade. So um, some of those kids finding a way to get involved with those parents. Um, and so now how I plan to do it is um, as far as my classmates, um, sometimes I complain about stuff we're going through and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> I think it's good to kind of share a little bit um, when they do the thank you Jesus and I will say, well, I'm grateful to God because this week he helped me to study or I overcame this and that. Um, I think we could, I think it's easy to talk about that in my class just because we're pretty much open. Um, also, finding ways to study. Um, sometimes people ask me, why do you get good grades? I tell them it's because I pray. Mm -hmm. so, um, mm. uh, as far as um, my family, um, those areas of common grounds, um, just when we're talking about wisdom, and my mom shares stuff with me that she thinks are the ways of the wise, she always tells me all these things on every little details about how to be wise. So um, just bringing up in a sleek way something I learned from the Bible. Hey, Mom, that's so true, you know. I learned the same thing from the Bible the other day. Wow. Oh, well, thank you. Wow. You know, that's really wise. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> or even when we talk about plans for our future, um, just letting, just um, bringing the testimony from our past because we've, um, we've been up and down. My family has been up and down, so always bringing up, hey mom, I'm really grateful to Jesus because I remember when this and that happened, and I thought it was over, our lives were over, but thank Jesus we're here, and so now we can make plans for the future, and if there's something that happens, we can look at it too. Um, and as far as with the neighbors, there's many ways, um, getting to meet some of the Parents, um, if you're concerned with some of the kids, or even um, sometimes kids want to come over, so ask them, hey, did you ask permission to your parents? Oh, okay, I'll go home with you and check if it's okay with your parents, and then get to meet them down. So, um, that was, that was my point. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> affirmation, affirmation. <laughs> Okay. How, how did you think, how well did you think she used her evangelism style? Her evangelism style, her what? Testimonial, Testimonial and, and invitational. invitational. Very so, good. Very good, right? Very yeah. good. See, once you think about it, that's why we want to write it down or think about it so that we, we consciously making the best use of the gifts that God has given us. Mm -hmm. I think it was real good. Yeah. And your accountability partner is there to call and check you up, make your girl, you know. <laughs> See, because it's useless. You know, some tests, some classes, the information is sufficient. If you have the information and you can't use it in this class, guess what? You failed. You're not a contagious Christian. But I believe that because we're learning how to know practically put it into, into, into play and to actually do the things, uh, we'll be successful if we, if we are uh, uh, faithful in applying what we've learned. Okay, Elvin, come on up and, and share with us. Both of you can come on up and talk, talk a little bit about your plan. You to Sister J. Let's see if, if this thing is so simple that somebody else could get it in one session. If you just wasted four weeks teaching what we could have taught in one session. Let's go. Well, um, I, I wasn't sure I was getting it right when I first started. I was trying to be a... What is um, Pastor Brian mm -hmm. trying to show me? What, where is he trying to go with this? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't getting it for some reason, but then when I... When he explained it to me, and I looked at my strength, you know, the areas that I, um, I am best uh, capable in, which is service and invitational, I kind of get the gist of it a little better. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that in order to reach one, you have to be able to reach a person where they are. Okay. Right? And most times, people are in a situation where, you know, they, need. they just need, they need certain needs being met, they need uh, financial need, they need um, 
emotionally, they have, you know, needs of just someone to be a friend or someone that they can talk to. Mm -hmm. And I feel that if you can reach or reach people where their needs are, mm -hmm. then you can get a closer relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you can witness to them and tell mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. about the love of God. And mm -hmm. so I see uh, my my strength in service is going on there and uh, meet people where they are mm -hmm. in their needs mm -hmm. and try to, you know, mm -hmm. you can reach every, every need, but you try mm -hmm. to reach most of their needs and as a result, mm -hmm. uh, invite them. So let me help him out here because that identifying his styles, did he identify who he's going to be working with? No. No. Everybody. Because you see, yeah. that, that's what we do right. in church now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to be meeting the needs. <laughs> it can't be for yeah. everybody, but we're going to be meeting needs. I'm helping you. I'm okay. using you as, as, a, as a, the class is going to be grading, you know, but you're learning as a grading. Okay. So now, what are we requiring him to do? Elder exam. Narrow it down to no, no, no. who his needs. I mean, does he walk down the street and hand out $100 bills? Right. Or does he come to the church and hand out $100 bills? Targets of opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, who are you going to be working with? That's what they're asking you know. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's... It, you'd be surprised, but, you know, you go out there in the community and you meet so many people, even when we go on the street um, um, tracks, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, you meet people and just getting to know them. You know, you get to be drawn closer to them, you get to know their needs, you know, just by talking to people. So, I enjoy going out there meeting people mm -hmm. in the other community. Okay, good. Um, so, so based that's, that's where my you So based on his answer, he's focusing on what people, people who he would, would like to know. know. People who like to know. So he gets a two, right? Because our principal says what? Start with those Start who you know. Start with people you know already, know already yeah. and then ran yeah. on. <laughs> no, not necessarily people I no, know. I'm not, so. I'm not saying that what he's doing is wrong. Right. I'm just saying be prepared that it may not yield as much right. results as if you started with people you already know. I don't mean people who are Christians already or whatever. I mean, starting with people. So it, he's still positive, right? right. He's still he's positive. Positive. <laughs> still on fire for the Lord. Just he's taking it down a route that may not yield immediate fruits or fruits even in the in the in the near near future. Okay, good. So let's see, Sister Jay. How about how about you? Go ahead. What did you get from what we were saying? No, no, no. Don't worry about the format or anything. We're not going to grade you as far as because he was at the class, see? And he was sleeping through the class. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to grade him real hard. Well, um, how must I start? No, I was just thinking how to start or what to say, but, you know, I... It's not very hard for me to reach out to people, whether I know them or not. Right. In the home, I will share my experiences. Say then that I am having a problem or something that I need to the Lord to work out for me. And when it comes true, is no problem for me to share it in the home and say, "This is what has happened." And I was there with this thing resting on my mind, and the Lord has worked on things for me. Mm -hmm. And you know, in Jamaica, it's not difficult to walk on the street. A lot of people are there. When they go to the market, it's not like market here. You have a lot of people in the market, and I always use the things that they sell as a means of evangelizing by saying, oh my, look at how the Lord is good, and you know, you are able to get food to take to the market. He, you know, look at the lovely pumpkins, one seed, <laughs> one little seed, you know, is able to produce a lot of pumpkins. Look at that, one little tiny seed, and the big ackee tree, a mango tree, just one little seed that, you know, bring forth all of these amount of fruits, and God is so good, he didn't want us to suffer or to 
find ourselves in need is just because of sin and if we want to just depend on him and serve him. So it's no problem for me to go in the market and just I will come at this spot and buy here and I just say something here. I go at that spot and I say something sometimes. Mm-hmm. I do everything at home before I go to the market. Then all day I will spend in the market there talking to people. Mm-hmm. Anywhere I go, I speak where I just talk to them. <laughs> on the roadside, I just stop and talk to them. And now I am free. It makes it even better for me because I don't have any children holding me back. So I just go there and just talk and they enjoy my talking. And if I come to your house and if I can't feel at home to partake, help you cook and do any little thing, I cannot stay there either because I am uncomfortable. <laughs> I, 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 I was working with a pastor in a crusade and when I went out on the street, when I went out there, they would say to me, we don't have any clothes to wear today uh, because we're not accustomed to go to church. I don't have any clothes to go to um, come to the crusade or even come to the church. I would go and I would go back to where I am living at my church and other churches and I collect a lot of things and, and I would take it back to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not very near, you know. It is like, um, like Riverside. Or even further down on the side. Right. Say then, um, the LA. Right. You have right. to go to LA. I went to LA and do my, the, 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 the crusade mm-hmm. there. And I have to come back to California. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we are on the or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and connect from your church and the other church and the one that I am going and carry and I will distribute to everybody. And they come and they, you know, choose what size they can wear and shoes and since I am in Jamaica, uh, my church would say, um, in Jamaica, I started a um, what, what, garment instru- instruction class. It entails entrepreneurship, and I choose to sell peanuts as my project. Um, I collect, I, after when the class was finished, I turned it over to the church in welfare. And I collected about $14,000 as for the church Ooh. In, for welfare. You remember in that US still. And after when the church building project begins, I turned it over to the church building and I collected $10,000 before I came up here. So I am on the ball of still collecting here <laughs> my church because I am not there to collect. So I come here and asking for a little donation. <laughs> Some has given me already. And I'm still <laughs> okay. It's the thirty five to the third work, you know? Are you burning the time? I'm telling you here, you, you, you love me so much. I feel so comfortable when, I'm come, when I come to this church. You make me feel so good. And I'm sorry that I have to. I cannot. It is not possible for me to come here every Sabbath because I have to go where my daughter goes to church. And I am leaving shortly back to Jamaica. So maybe this is my last Sabbath here for this year. I did that for my game. I owe us the money. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Don't put your hands together. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? This is, it's not like, like most of us were clueless to what evangelism was or what it entailed. It's, it, this is just a tool for organizing your thoughts, organizing your methodology, making sure that you're using the best making the best use of the time, the gifts, the people skills, all of these things that God has blessed us with. So even for somebody who has never been to the classroom, once the principles are explained, you see how easy it is to for them to catch on and to, to understand that this is what God has called us to do. He has given each of us gifts. Do you believe that? He has given us each of us gifts, and those gifts are to be used in evangelism. You may not be the preacher type. You may not be the confrontational evangelist. 
may not be the intellectual evangelist, but you can be a servant evangelist. Amen. 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 You can be a servant evangelist. You can be an invitational evangelist, like the woman at the well. You can bring thousands to Christ without even preaching a word to them. You just tell them, come, come with me. You can be an interpersonal evangelist, like Matthew. You can open up your house as a, as a party area for, for people different types of people to come and then you invite spiritual people to be there so that the two mm -hmm. worlds can collide and there can be some mm -hmm. type of interaction and, mm -hmm. and some type of uh, influencing from, for Christ. You can be a testimonial evangelist. Your story is so powerful. What God has done for you is so powerful that you can use that to bring others to Christ. And even if you think your story in all that, guess what? Your friends are interested mm -hmm. to know your story, to know your experience. Mm -hmm. and using your experience, you can lead others to Christ. All right. That was your final exam. Mm -hmm. And I want you to hold on to this and to keep <laughs> looking at it, keep reviewing it, and, and think mm -hmm. about it. God has called each and every one of us mm -hmm. to engage in evangelism. Mm -hmm. It's our duty, it's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. But more so, it's our privilege mm -hmm. to witness to others. And um, mm -hmm. at this time, we're going to close. But as we close, let's just stand. Um, has everybody gotten uh, an accountability partner? You have a, your accountability partner's name and phone number. Because this is not just a plan on paper. This is how you're going to be doing evangelism for now. Until you come up with a better plan. Amen? Amen. 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 And as you practice the basics, <coughs> practice the basics, um, you become proficient, you become contagious. Contagious for Jesus. They'll be, they'll be like, oh my, we can't let her in here because she'll infect everybody. <laughs> she'll influence everybody for Christ. And that's my that's my prayer. It may not happen. I'm not looking for anything to happen next mm -hmm. week. But I'm looking for us to be consistently witnessing for Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and just sowing seeds and blooming and growing and doing all of these things so that in the end we can have a wonderful harvest for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can we stand together as we pray this close? Yes. Lord, thank you for um, this day and what we've learned. And we hope to share and, and spread the word and, and be obedient to the Spirit. Thank you for um, everybody that's here. And we hope to be a blessing to others as the service continues. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.